menthol shown here contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. When 3.190 grams of menthol was burnt completely in oxygen, complete combustion that is, it produced 0 0.8980 grams of carbon dioxide gas and 0 0.3680 grams of water vapor. Determine the empirical formula of menthol. Include all of your calculations. And then, a 6 gram sample of menthol was vaporized at 150.0 degrees Celsius and 100.2 kilopascals of pressure. The volume of the sample was 1.348 dm cube. Calculate the molar mass of menthol. Include all of your steps in the calculation. And finally, determine the molecular formula of menthol from the data in the question. So let's take a look now and break the question down one step at a time. First of all, we know that menthol contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen because this information is given in the question. Also, we're given that the mass of the menthol is 0 0.3190 grams. Also, another piece of key information is that all of the menthol is burnt or completely combusted in oxygen. And when this happens, you get this amount of carbon dioxide and you get this amount of water. Now, because all of the matter in the menthol has to go somewhere, and that somewhere is into the products, we can make a valid assumption here. And that is that all of the carbon that's here and all of the hydrogen that's here has come from the menthol. So immediately, let's find out how many moles we have of carbon here, how many moles we have of hydrogen here, and then that would allow us to assume that this number of moles of carbon and this amount of moles of hydrogen are exactly equal to the moles here and the moles here. And then at that point, we would be very much closer to determining the moles of oxygen. First up, carbon dioxide, 0 0.8980 grams. So how many moles of CO2 do we have? We get 0.0204 moles. This is the amount in moles of carbon dioxide. But let's look at the structure of carbon dioxide. For every one entity or one molecule of carbon dioxide, there is one atom of carbon. So if you have this many moles of carbon dioxide and the one is understood next to carbon, it's also true to say that you have this amount of moles of carbon. So let's put a C here next to carbon. Then we are going to do a similar thing for H2O and we get this amount of moles of H2O. We must be aware that for every one molecule of H2O there are two H's in it. If you have this amount of moles of H2O then you have twice as much moles of hydrogen. So moles of hydrogen will be equal to this multiplied by 2, 0 0.0402. And once we have the moles of carbon and the moles of hydrogen, then we can use this relationship, moles multiplied by the relative atomic mass of each element to give the mass in grams. So doing that here, this is the amount in moles of carbon multiplied by the relative atomic mass gives this mass here. Doing the same for the hydrogen, multiplying it by the relative atomic mass, you get these two masses. This is the mass in grams of hydrogen in menthol. This is the mass in grams of carbon. So once you have the mass in grams of carbon and hydrogen, 
Then you can take the sum of them, 0 0.2856 grams. Then, by subtracting this mass from this, you can get the mass in grams of oxygen. Solving for the mass of oxygen, we take the total mass of menthol and subtract the combined masses of hydrogen and carbon, which is this, giving you this amount as the actual mass of oxygen in menthol. Then we can take this mass of oxygen and convert it to moles, dividing the mass in grams by the relative atomic mass of oxygen. We get 0 0.0020 moles. And now that we have the amount in moles of oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon, we can line them up and figure out the empirical formula of menthol. So with this data here for the amount in moles of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, we can calculate the empirical formula. Remember though, that the empirical formula must include the simplest whole number ratio of all of the elements in a molecule or a structure. So taking the smallest of these three numbers and making that a common denominator, this comes to one. This divided by 0 0.0020, that comes to approximately 20. Doing the same here, that comes to approximately 10. There is a need to approximate. If you get 10 and a small decimal and 20 and a small amount of decimals, you need to approximate. Otherwise, you would find that the empirical formula would be very difficult to obtain. So with C10, H20, O1, we can write the empirical formula for menthol as C10, H20, and just an O with the one understood here. This is the empirical formula of menthol. Hello and welcome. The ideal gas equation. It's one of those areas which doesn't often present problems to students in IB chemistry when it comes to manipulating the equation and solving. You look at the relationship PV equals NRT. But very often, students are confused by the units that are involved in the equation. And they sometimes just disregard the units and solve and get a number at the end and put that number down um, with dm cube if it's volume that they're solving for or moles if it's moles they're solving for or temperature in Kelvin if that's what they're asked to solve for. But how do all of these units relate to each other in the ideal gas equation? It's important to know and to understand this because sometimes a question might not involve pressure in kilopascals it might not give you volume and dm cube, and when that happens, there is a need to convert units. Very often, the unit that students do have to convert in these questions is Celsius to Kelvin. And to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, you add 273. In this ideal gas equation also, you'll be using R, the gas constant, which has the units joules per Kelvin per mole. Temperature has to be given in Kelvin, N in moles. And over on this side of the equation, volume is usually given in dm cube. And then in the data booklet, pressure is given in kilopascals. At STP, standard temperature and pressure, at 273 Kelvin and 100 kilopascals, you're told that one mole of an ideal gas occupies 22.7 dm cubed. So if that is true, then this equation here must be satisfied if we plug in on this side the gas constant, 273 Kelvin, 1 mole, 1 dm cubed, and 100 kilopascals. But before we do that, we should be aware that 1 kilopascal is actually equal to one 
joule per dm cube. So the unit of pressure here is kilopascals. And one kilopascal, one joule per dm cube. It's important to be aware of that. Otherwise, you would be left in some doubt as to what's happening with the units in this equation here. And 100 kilopascals being the standard pressure could be expressed as 100 joules per dm cube. One kilopascal, one joule per dm cube. So pressure, standard pressure, multiplied by V, the volume of an ideal gas at standard temperature and pressure, given as 22.7. Then over on this side, you have R, the gas constant, with these units, joules per Kelvin, per mole. It's written like this. Then when you solve for either side of this equation, the answer comes up in each case to approximately 2270 on each side, showing the mathematical validity of all of the numbers that go into the ideal gas equation, but most importantly, showing you where the units go and how the units cancel. So you would end up with the unit of joule on this side and the unit of joule on this side. If in a question you're ever given pressure in pascals or volume in dm cube and you need to plug it into this equation, you need to make the adjustment. You might be given volume in meter cube or in cm cube. And in that case, you will have to bring it into dm cube before you plug it into this equation here using this unit of pressure, the kilopascal. If you're given pressure in pascals, you will have to convert that into kilopascals, where 1000 pascals makes up a kilopascal. But very often questions give you pressure in kilopascals, gives you volume in dm cube. So without getting too confused about any of this, it's totally okay to multiply whatever number is given here with kPa by whatever number is given with dm cube. Because when you break it down, you realize that dm cube could cancel with dm cube because one kPa is actually one joule per dm cube. None of this would actually matter too much when students just multiply kPa by dm cube, but it's important to know exactly where these units go and how they cancel. This part of the question says, six grams of menthol is vaporized at 150 degrees Celsius and 100.2 kilopascals. The volume of the six grams is this much and you are supposed to determine its molar mass, the molar mass of menthol. So this is the equation that you have available in the data booklet, PV equals NRT, the ideal gas equation. This is the value for the gas constant, which is also given to you. You have to be aware that you need to convert Celsius into Kelvin. As we explained previously, it's possible to multiply kilopascals by dm cube and units will cancel you don't need to do any unit conversions. So therefore, we can say P multiplied by V, 100.2 multiplied by 1.348 equals N, which we're trying to find, the amount in moles, multiplied by R, the gas constant, 8.31 joules per Kelvin mole. That multiplied by this temperature in Kelvin, adding 273 to it, we get 423 Kelvin. Solving for all of this and making N the subject of the formula on this side here, we will get 100.2 multiplied by 1.348 divided by 831 multiplied by 423. And all of that comes to 0 0.03842. Notice that I'm carrying all of the significant figures here. The only time that we need to look to round things up to a certain amount of significant figures is when we get to the final answer. And the final answer for this question, by the way, should be given to three significant figures. Because this data here given is four, 
This is given as one, two, three significant figures. This is given as one, two significant figures here. So let me make this zero there. This has four significant figures. So our answer then could be limited to three significant figures for the molar mass of the gas. And then if this is the amount in moles for six grams, this moles equals six grams. What's going to be the mass of one mole? And that is going to be one divided by 0 0.03842 multiplied by six. And that answer comes to 156 with some decimals behind it. But we don't need those decimals because we are rounding our answer up to three significant figures. In keeping with this, the minimum amount of significant figures given in our data in the question. Here you had three, here you had four, here you had four, and here you had four. So therefore, we are going to keep our answer as 156 grams per mole. And that is the mass of one mole of menthol. Final part of this question asks you to determine the full molecular formula of menthol. Well, we've determined the molar mass of menthol, M, as 156 grams per mole. And we've determined also the empirical formula, C10H20O. Then using this formula to determine the molecular formula that we need, we divide the molar mass of menthol by the empirical formula mass, which is where we take the empirical formula, we go to the periodic table, and we determine what its formula mass would be as given here. When you do that, you'll find it also comes up to 156. Dividing these, you get 1, which means that the empirical formula for menthol is the same as its molecular formula, because taking this 1, multiplying it by 156, will give you 156. So menthol's actual molecular formula is C10H20O.